My name is Roy Elsey, and I'm Chief Analyst at Omdia. And what we do every year is we look forward to the year ahead in key technologies. And for 2022, cloud computing will be a bit of a rebalancing year, but it's got some things in it that you might not be expecting. Because when you look at cloud computing, in 2019, our surveys indicated that around about 20 to 25 percent of workloads were running in some form of public cloud. At the peak of the pandemic, it was at parity. It was nearly 50-50. Last year in November, when we ran the survey, figures came out, it's between 40 and 45 percent. Now, there's a degree of, uh, of sort of margin for error there, because this is a, a large, you know, Five to 10,000 end user survey, but it's an end user survey um, globally on lots of organizations. So we allow a little bit of latitude. But generally, we've seen cloud computing come from being a significant minority to now being a significant uh, peer port of, of the work that. Uh, organizations use to run their, their workloads. And that means that it's not going to go away. We don't think it's going to sort of become 100%. Um, and the reason for that is because when you look at the trends within public cloud, the fastest growing trend is hybrid cloud. And hybrid cloud is where the infrastructure is on your premises or in your colo facility if you're running a colo. But effectively, it's like your data center, but connected to the public cloud. Um, and as that's the fastest growing segment and has consistently been over the last couple of years, the fastest growing segment, I think we're going to see that continue. Because multi-cloud is one of these things that people talk about. But actually, the reality of multi-cloud is multi-cloud is a collection of clouds that people have got. It's like they've been going along, and over the course of a couple of years, they've collected a couple of cloud providers that they're using. There doesn't seem to be a key strategy for multi-cloud because there's a lack of interoperability between the clouds. Now, cloud native, Kubernetes, is breaking down the barriers and is making workloads more portable. True, but the data that goes along with those workloads is still stuck in whatever clouds it, it's in. So you're going to see the layers uh, evolve to enable the portability um, probably through 22, 23, and 24. Then we'll have strategic multi-cloud, which is where I think most people want to get. The other thing that we've seen is the rise of ARM. ARM technologies are forecast in Omdia's uh, server tracker to be something like about 25% of the market uh, by 2025. So there's a very big growing demand for ARM because for certain workload types, they're much more efficient. And with the environmental sustainability aspect, they're also much more environmentally sustainable than the lower power consumption. As we talk about environmental sustainability, cloud is making a big push for its credentials. The likes of Google um, have been saying their cloud is carbon zero already, and they're going to be uh, going for a complete sort of back to where they were at the start of the cloud revolution. Uh, position. AWS are reporting that they're one of the biggest purchasers of renewable energy on the planet. So there's a lot going on in the cloud space when it comes to environmental sustainability. And that is something that will have an impact on organizations as they start to report and show how their carbon emissions are tracking over time. And are they going to hit net zero by 2030 or 2035 or 2040, whatever your government set? 
So cloud is, is a leader in that. It's got a lot to say on that. Um, and there's a lot of tools. And in 2022, you're going to see more of those tools expanding the value propositions that cloud has in terms of environmental sustainability. But an area that we see as being very, very uh, weak when it comes to the cloud is the fact that the cloud is predominantly x86. Um, but there is a lot of workloads on Unix boxes, on AS400s, on IBM IIs, or whatever they're called these days, mainframes, and a raft of other legacy hardware that people want to get off their premises and move it into some form of cloud-like environment so they can consume that in a cloud-like way. Limited at present, IBM and Microsoft have got some of that technology installed in their data centers, their cloud data centers globally. And there's a couple of companies that will run those for you because they've got the relationships to have them in those data centers, but it's very small. Most people are talking of moving off those legacy um, hardware and putting it onto x86 in the cloud. But there is options, and that's what people have got to consider, is those options. And finally, it's what role the cloud is going to be playing in the edge. Because the edge, as we've already spoke about, um, is growing. It's growing massively. Its potential to disrupt the business and bring the compute and the AI particularly to the point where decisions are made, where the data is captured, is tremendous. And it is going to sort of evolve. You are going to see much more of it. But it's the connectivity of that and how it connects to other units, how that information can be shared so bigger decisions can be made from just the small at that point in time. That's where the cloud will come in. And this is a role that we believe quite strongly that the telco has got a very good, strong position in. Because the telco um, lost the cloud market, effectively. I was on a speaking tour in the Far East saying that one of my audiences at telco decided they didn't like it and they got up and walked out. That was something like about eight, eight years ago. Has the telco done anything in the cloud? No, AWS, Google, Microsoft, IBM, et al, have all dominated. But the edge, the telco could own and could make theirs and work with the cloud providers to deliver the services to those edge locations, run those edge locations, to run those services that will be very localized. But yet again, this is a could be. And that's where we are in 22, is will the edge, will the cloud edge actually evolve? And will somebody like the telcos take ownership of it and partner with the hyperscalers to make it a reality? Or will the hyperscalers with their hybrid cloud type solutions, such as Outpost and Stack Fiji and Google Anthos, spread its tentacles and grow in smaller discrete locations through lots of small relationships to grow that edge cloud business. 2022 will be the year that that crystallizes. So I expect to see that at the end. So I think that's enough for me for now. There's more on 2022 trends to watch on cloud computing on the Omdia website. So thank you for listening and have a good day.